Welcome to this InfoHub Special Edition. Over the weekend of September 28th to the 29th, the tongue of Letem welcomed the government ministers as they embarked on several community meetings in the Rupununi region. They met with residents to listen to their concerns and to help craft solutions. There were several stops on the itinerary of the Prime Minister, Moses Nagamutu, who arrived in the Upper Takutu, Upper Resikribo region on Saturday, September 28th. On Saturday evening, the Prime Minister, along with his wife, Mrs. Sita Nagamutu, attended the St. Ignatius Heritage Celebration. In his remarks, the Prime Minister noted that the community had much to celebrate. I received a message from Minister Kathy Hughes. She advised me that today they have installed the Ministry of Public Telecommunication has provided internet services to 24 communities in Region 9. So now you are online. So this is a very great achievement that you are not only celebrating Indigenous Peoples Month as a cultural event, you're also now connected to the world and the world is connected to you. And this is a tremendous advantage you have. Sunday was a busy day for Prime Minister Nagamoto as he made several site visits and witnessed the agreement for the rehabilitation of the Letham Airdrome. He noted the project's importance to the region. This is one location that would become a, a hub, a regional hub, and an international hub, as the minister has said. And we believe that uh, the investment is worthy and the project is of critical importance to this vast region bordering a vast subcontinent, actually Brazil. Next, the Prime Minister conducted a site visit of the ongoing construction of the Civil Defense Commission's regional warehouse. Director General of the CDC, Lieutenant Colonel Kester Craig, gave the Prime Minister a tour of the site and briefed him on the progress of the facility. His visit did not end there. The Prime Minister, along with the Minister of Business, the Honourable Himraj Rajkumar, and the Minister of Public Infrastructure, the Honourable David Partisan, then visited the business incubator in Letham. The team was provided with an overview of the works completed so far and the vision for the facility. The Prime Minister's visit culminated with him appearing on Radio Letham, where he provided listeners with an overview of his visit to the region. Over in Toka, the achievements of the coalition government were commended when the Minister of Social Protection, the Honorable Amna Ali, engaged residents there. The village of Toka, in the Upper Takatu, Upper Essequibo region, is a small community of approximately 290 residents who practice mostly cash crop and livestock farming, carpentry and construction works. According to the residents prior to 2015, the community was neglected. However, under this current government, the village is progressing. At the meeting, the residents were given an opportunity to voice their concerns. Instead, the Social Protection Minister heard few complaints since the majority of the community expressed their satisfaction with the government's efforts. Eugene Isaac and Micah Davis are among the many who are eager to speak about the improvements Toka has received. A lot of things that have, that have happened. And I don't have to look far, we just have to look in Toka. We sit under a nice shed, a stand. Uh, of course, there was a lot of work done by the people at Toka to do the stand, one million and twenty thousand dollars, the two stands, but the, the, the roofing was done by the government. We see the tourism um, place going up. Um, we see the, look around the internet, coming at many millions, you know, and you know there's a lot more things to do. I've seen a lot of development in, the, in my community over the couple of years that the government um, has taken place. Um, for example, in terms of, um, as we're standing at the bottom of a very lovely pavilion at the moment, and then there's other projects that's happening within the communities, and these projects also involve a lot of youths in terms of creating in, um, employment. Um, for example, tourism. I'm, I'm a pay keen interest in tourism, and these are some of the development that we have been looking for um, for the past years. According to Minister Ali, 
The Ministry of Social Protection has invested some $24 million in a new tourist site in the village, which is currently under construction. I'm very proud this morning to be part of this project uh, program, to be here and to see firsthand what we are doing in Toka to help to develop the village. I am happy to know that tourism is your interest and that you will boost it. The education and health sector in Toka also benefited. Toka's Tushao Delano Davis explained that the nursery school is not at its previous stage. He noted too that the health facility is also transformed. We have been seeing a, a vast improvement in the school where we have our nursery school recently renovated and also accompanying the nursery school we have a new um, sanitary block built also and then we have a new teacher's quarters um, built just of recent. We have a health centre um, equipped with one health worker and just last year we were able to renovate the fence and build a new sanitary block and now the clinic is being renovated at a tune of $4 million is being, um, it is being renovated at. So a community member was fortunate to get that contract, which is very good. Tushau Davis believes that the new environment has helped with the performance of the pupils. For this year, we have seen a very good result coming out from the grade 6 exam. We had eight students writing and we have three that um, did really well. Along with the, well, I would say, the internet access by the teachers, they were able to see some of the new program that is online. And they, um, which helped them to get the children and prepare. At the end of the successful meeting, each villager was presented with gifts. The minister's Saturday outreach did not end at Toka, as she travelled to the community of Parashara to join in the heritage festivities. While there, residents also welcomed the gifts provided as Minister Ali made the presentation on behalf of the government. Intense rainfall did not deter minister within the Ministry of Communities, Annette Ferguson, who pressed on to meet with the residents of Yakarinto. As, as, as a minister of the government, I see it fit to meet with our people, to enlighten you, and to educate you on what your government is doing. Her message was backed by the establishment of an ICT hub in the community connecting them to the outside world and granting access to information and education opportunities. Our young people now can access information any part of this world. We said we will open up the, the, the airwaves. So what we did, we brought in radio stations here in region number nine. Minister Ferguson's call on the residents of Yakarinta was a significant one as it is the first time a government minister has visited the remote village. As such, the minister brought the villagers up to speed on works such as the Hayes program. The Hayes program, <clears throat> whereby we were able to bring young people, take them to Georgetown, train them, be it in craft, be it in, in, in mechanic, be it in joinery. So when they come back into their communities, they can now become employers. Before the minister took her leave, she and her team donated a number of items to the members of the village. Reporting for InfoHub, Nicosi Bruce. The issue of accountability was highlighted as the Minister of Indigenous Peoples Affairs, Sydney Ali Cock, met with residents of Fairview. Minister Ali Cock underscored the importance of holding village council meetings regularly so that the village can be kept abreast with the state of the village's finances in order to be able to better plan activities and budget for the community's needs. The community of Fairview received payments from Aerocrama for logging on community lands. Currently, this has amounted to $13 million. However, the community was unaware that this amount was in the community's bank account. So, what you need to do as a council is to organize at the public meeting to get these ideas where you come up with and your budget. You got money. This is where it could help the, um, the to develop the, the culture, the culture operation. Here is where it's good use 
of your money, you could say, I did this mm -hmm. from my own money. According to Minister Alicock, village property belongs to all the residents. Therefore, everyone should have a say in how to use the resources. He noted that Fairview in particular is fortunate to have money that they can even choose to pay their show and councillors or other administrative personnel if they see fit. To this end, he suggested they consider having an accountant manage their finances. Every village council could have an accountant being paid. So if one council, when one council leaves, that accountant continues so that your monies could, uh, proper accountability could uh, continue. The minister urged the village to seek support through their partnership with Erokrama to have members of their community trained in accounts management and other areas. He noted that President David Granger and Finance Minister the Honorable Winston Jordan are very serious when it comes to accountability of taxpayers' money. An example all should follow. Don't make greed overcome you or dishonesty. Because these things are very, very serious. The minister was accompanied by Minister of Business and Tourism, Hemraj Rajkumar. In his remarks, Minister Rajkumar noted the president's plans for bridging the gap between the coast and the hinterland. He also spoke of plans for education, health and other social sectors in the hinterland. Minister within the Ministry of Indigenous Peoples Affairs, Valerie Garidolo, traveled by boat to Simoni, a small satellite village of Katoka, to meet with approximately 250 residents. During her interaction, Minister Garita Lowe highlighted that Semini will benefit from a housing project that will see 32 clay brick constructed houses for families. The funds have already been supplied to the village council and the construction of 16 homes have already begun. The homes will have two bedrooms, a kitchen and a dining area, plumbing installation and one 500-gallon black water tank for water storage. During the meeting, the residents requested that a doctor be stationed permanently at the village health center. They also called for more sports activities for village youths, establishing a women's group, and creating entrepreneurs through the Ministry of Indigenous Peoples Affairs Hayes project. Minister Greta Lowe assured them that the government will work to resolve these matters. At the end of the meeting, the minister distributed sports gear and school supplies to the villagers. For InfoHub, Ayanna George. Delicia Haynes now tells us that villagers in Kumu are excited after they heard of the expected interventions coming to their community. During a fruitful meeting, the Public Telecommunications Minister, Catherine Hughes, highlighted the government's plans to open up the hinterland through connectivity via the internet. Kumu village is located at the foot of the Kanuku Mountain, an approximate 20 to 30 minute drive from the town of Lethem. Minister of Public Telecommunications Catherine Hughes announced that this village is next in line to benefit from internet access. Minister Hughes explained that work was expected to commence as soon as Monday, September 30 and be completed during October in order for residents to start accessing this service. We're going to be able to set up your internet access. Now, how does this internet work? A couple of months ago, many of you will know that there's a huge tower in um, Latham that we were able to put into operation. We had to get some new batteries. We had to set it up. And because you're pretty close to Latham, you're going to be able to get internet from that, from that uh, tower. Chairperson of the National Data Management Authority, Floyd Levi, said that in remote areas, the ministry has established more than 60 satellite dishes, which will be the source of the internet service. However, a few villages outside of Lethem will get the services from another source. He explained how two shows specifically will benefit. Particularly for the two shows who go to the National Two Shows um, Conference, you can talk to your fellow two shows without leaving your village and without incurring expense on them. Good? So if you want to talk to indigenous brothers and sisters across Guyana, this is a platform on which you will do it. Free, of course. I repeat that. Free, of course. Youth leader Brenrick Francis was excited about the news of the establishment of internet service in his home village. Francis said this will significantly impact the functions of the village council, education and tourism sectors. He also noted that the coming of internet access to the village will help in harnessing the youth population in the village to learn a skill and contribute meaningly to their village. As a young man, I have different ideas of, of how I could... Um, do something additional to, 
to help out my community, to help out the people living here, and to help out maybe the city country as a whole. With farmers here, what I am planning to do is carry out a training where I could get some youths um, learning to create websites, because I actually could do that as well. To help farmers in our community, to help them to ad advertise their farm produce and so on, their crafts and so on. And the most biggest, biggest one here is that the community is now going into tourism, mm -hmm. right? And we have a big plan for tourism in our community because of the Kumu Falls. Minister Hughes and her team from the Ministry of Public Telecommunications and the National Data Management Authority handed over electronic tablets to Brenrick and other persons in the village, which they can use to improve health, education, sport and other areas when the internet service is installed. From the village of Kumu in Region 9 with videographer Kareem Peters, I am Delicia Haynes for Info Hub. Meanwhile, Minister within the Ministry of Public Infrastructure, Jaipur Sharma, showed residents of Patarinao, Region 9, that their land titling issues will be addressed at the upcoming National Two Shows Council Conference. This administration is committed in dealing with those issues. His Excellency the President and the National Two Show Conference is going to be started shortly. I guess the various two shows throughout the length and breadth of this country will be raising those issues when they meet with His Excellency David Arthur Granger and his ministers in the next few days. And of course, um, those matters will be addressed. The minister was at the time responding to questions put forward by residents during the community meeting on Saturday. He explained to the residents how the matter was dealt with previously. The previous administration put us in a little jam because, you know, you may be to the border to Brazil, but you have in this particular region issues where, um, you know, they would give extension, the previous government would give extension to villages. And the, the village that extend, the, that, the village that extend, the neighboring village had requested um, claim on that same land. Minister Sharma noted that issues such as land titling should have consultations involving all the respective persons or groups before a decision is made. The residents noted that once this matter is settled with, it will allow them to further develop the community's infrastructure. To this end, the junior infrastructure minister disclosed that there are plans to construct a bridge at the entrance of the village so residents can have easier access to their community. Before wrapping up his meeting, Minister Sharma distributed 10 electronic tablets to the village and a quantity of cricket gear for the village's cricket club, along with volleyballs, footballs and other sport equipment and several farming tools. Neola Damon, InfoHub. Construction of a fully concrete Minari bridge starts in approximately one month's time. Over the weekend, not only was the agreement penned with the contractor, but during this planned Region 9 outreach, residents met with visiting ministers to discuss development of their various communities. Government's plan for a superhighway linking Linden in Region 10 all the way up to Letterman Region 9 will soon see work beginning on another major aspect of the plan construction of a concrete structure at Minari Bridge. The current bridge is a wooden structure. On Sunday, during a community engagement in Region 9, Minister of Public Infrastructure, the Honorable David Patterson, made the announcement. The design has been completed for the Minari Bridge. I know persons were um, asking and questioning why we haven't started as yet, um, because um, the, the contract was awarded um, about three or four months ago. And it's a simple reason. Everyone knows that we are building the, yes, and I commit, we are building the Linden to Letham Road, the first phase one, um, starts um, in October, and I repeat it. I mean, I, I, I've heard the opposition make merry about a statement by the British High Commission. Um, I'm undeterred. In my budget this year, there's $200 million, and we have committed, we have a stockyard um, of ready, and, and and both works, the bridge and the works that we're doing, awaited, Mr. Prime Minister, the final design. The bridge will be constructed by engineers from Mott MacDonald, an international engineering management and development consultancy. Meanwhile, as he stopped to inspect the Minari Bypass, which was constructed early in the year, 
Minister of Natural Resources, the Honorable Raphael Trotman, noted that the new structure fits into the overall plan for the Linden to Letham Road. A contract has been given for this bridge. In fact, the contract had been given out about four months ago, but quite sensibly, Ministry of Public Infrastructure paused because we're doing the road that is government from Linden to Letham. And so we wanted the international consultants who are reviewing the designs to ensure that if we do the bridge, it will be uh, line, it will line up with the overall design for the entire road. The bridge is going to be a concrete bridge, not a wooden bridge, and so we wanted to ensure that it had the right um, width and, of course, density of concrete, etc. Though the Ministry of Public Infrastructure is the lead agency on the project, the Ministry of Natural Resources is lending support to ensure the road remains possible before, during and after the rainy season while the road has been completed. Through foresight, we had placed into the budget for 2019 a sum of money for the first phase so that work can start while we wait for the British funding to come on stream. Just the day before, government ministers visited several villages in the South Central, Central and North Rupununi, meeting with residents and following up on projects currently taking place in the region. The inclement weather on Saturday caused delays and even rescheduling of some meetings. However, the Honourable Raphael Trotman, Minister of Natural Resources, through his team was able to deliver on a promise made to residents of Pariquarno. The community had asked for a boat and engine, which was delivered by the minister's team, along with the farming equipment and plants. On Sunday, Minister Trotman made a brief stop at Toka Village, where he met with residents. I'm here on behalf of His Excellency uh, President David Granger to do as to Shao said, to let you know that you are not forgotten and that you are cared for and that we are concerned about your well-being. Toka, known for its large-scale cattle rearing, is one of the villages where a water catchment was constructed early in the year to be used for farming and cattle during the dry season. Only recently, Minister Trotman delivered on the promise of a village pavilion which was completed to go with its modelled ball field. On Sunday, the minister also delivered farming equipment and plants to the community, along with some school supplies. On matters raised by residents of land titling and teacher accommodation, etc., Minister Trotman promised to look into these issues, as well as have the relevant ministries do the same. For the first time, the village of Masara has access to portable water and internet access. Residents of the North Rupununi community have lauded the government's efforts to improve their lives over the past four years. Minister of State Don Hastings Williams met and interacted with the residents of Masara, who expressed gratitude to the government for the many initiatives they have implemented within the village, especially their newly established internet connectivity and water distribution system. I must thank the government for doing some work on the football ground. They have a water trestle, it used to waste. Now it is not wasting since the PVC pipes were there. It was distributed to the um, section two homes. I was seeing these people, when they were setting this internet, I was with them, I was standing right there with them. I was trying to see what kind of something, because I never, see but i heard or we heard something about it so i wanted to see with my two get into blind eyes now but I, I was trying to see it and now it is installed in my community in my village and it has become a reality as years pass and now today we are seeing it and they are used the young people are using it According to the Minister of State, the intention is to ensure that the residents in the hinterland benefit from the same services as those on the coastland. Guyana is now moving in the right direction and that is where we want to go as a government. That is where we want to take you. Not because you're living far in Masara, you must be left behind. It shouldn't be. Whatever is accessible to the people on the coast, should be made accessible to the people in the hinterland. And if you have been listening and following the president himself, he talks so much about connecting the hinterland to the coastland. And he's not only talking about roads, connecting through roads. I know the last time you had a problem with this road. 
But now I was able to drive in a little better because we did some work on the road. But don't worry, we're going to do more work in future and make it a better road. From the beautiful village of Masaro in the north, Rupununi, with videographer Kenyan Bacchus, Seneca Thorne for InfoHub. And I traveled with the Minister of Communities, Ronald Balkan, to Shulinab, one of the final stops on that fan out exercise. The approximately 500 residents of Shulinab in South Rupununi now have free internet access. This is thanks to a satellite system which is installed through the Ministry of Public Telecommunications that is solar powered and free to all residents. The Deputy Tushaw, Calvin Jose, shared his thoughts on how beneficial this new setup will be to the community. First of all, I would thank the government for um, giving us this free Wi Fi. And we were suffering years past. Um, we never used to have proper communication. We used to have what like radios, but not uh, efficient communication. Deputy Tusha Jose noted that the ICT system offers a wide range of benefits to adults and the children, especially students. In terms of research, uh, uh, SBAs, the, the secondary school children are willing for this, this, this communication and um, it's very it, it's benefiting us the people from showing up it means that the village and any resident here including the village council can have access to government offices uh, any government ministry whether uh, located here in the region or in Georgetown so <laughs> it, it is almost like magic showing up might still be remote, but it is no longer um, isolated. According to Minister Balkan, Shulinab is one of several communities across the region benefiting from such a project. It started uh, last year, I believe, with internet connections in Masakanari, Aishalton, Sand Creek, and Karasabai. And uh, just installed has been um, similar connectivity to the villages of Fairview, Kuropokari, Surama, Wobeta, Bina Hill, Kwatamang, Anai, Ruperti, Aranaputa, Toka, Masara, Crashwater, Rewa, Apateri, Yakarinta, Parikwarinau, Potarinau, here in Shulinab, Katunarib, and Sawariwau. From the compound of the Shulinab Benab with videographer Akim Thomas, Paul McAdam for InfoHub. This has been a special edition of InfoHub where we highlighted the recent community meetings held in the Upper Takatu Upper Esequibo region by government ministers. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.